1884 was a year full of tensions for Europe. The Berlin Conference was taking place at that time, and its main goal was to let the European powers reach an agreement on how to divide the African lands between them. Portugal, at that time a constitutional monarchy, was one of the conference participants, and had a plan called the Pink Map, in Portuguese Mapa Cor de Rosa, that aimed to unite its colonies of Angola and Mozambique. The project had this name because the claimed territory was usually marked on the maps with the color pink. The United Kingdom was also part of this meeting, and it had the ambitious intention of building a railroad to unite the Cape City in South Africa with Cairo in Egypt. Since the Pink Map plan would prevent the possibility of moving forward with this project, the British sent an ultimatum to Portugal, demanding the withdrawal of all Portuguese troops stationed in the region of present-day Zambia and Zimbabwe. Portugal accepted the British terms so peace could be maintained, and the Pink Map idea was no more. The situation of the Portuguese monarchy had been very unstable for some years, but this diplomatic defeat was the last straw. The proclamation of the Republic was seen as the only solution to the kingdom's instability, and this idea was getting more and more popular support. To make matters worse, this man named João Franco was put in charge in 1906, and the very next year used his powers to establish a dictatorship. The popular discontent just kept growing. On the 1st of February of 1908, the King Dom Carlos I and his family went for a ride in an open-top carriage around Terreiro do Passo, in Lisbon, when they found a group of revolutionaries. As it was to be expected from a civilized nation, all of them decided to talk with the King about their problems so that they could be solved. Just kidding, they opened fire and killed both the King and the heir to the throne, Prince Dom Luís Filipe. It was a tragedy, and now Dom Manuel II, the youngest and unprepared son of Dom Carlos, would be selected as the new King of Portugal. The monarchy would only last two more years, because on the 5th of October of 1910, a coup d'etat happened. And on the same day, the regime that governed Portugal for the last 770 years was finally abolished. The first Portuguese Republic was declared and, as it turns out, becoming a republic does not magically solve every problem of a nation overnight. In fact, the times that came after the proclamation of the Republic were full of instability. In the short term of 16 years, there were 8 presidents and 44 different governments. Nevertheless, this time was important for the development of Portuguese society, mainly the church-state separation. The First Republic ended in 1926 with another coup d'état that established a dictatorship. The Minister of Finances at that time was António de Oliveira Salazar, and since he drastically improved the Portuguese economy, he was known as an economic wizard. With his good reputation, Salazar was able to climb the ranks, so in 1932 he was named President of the Council, a similar role to that of Prime Minister. Salazar went back with various social reforms of the First Republic, a new constitution was written in 1933, and it basically gave Salazar absolute power to govern the country. So the declaration of a despotic state with conservative and catholic traits was now officialized. This regime was called Estado Novo, Portuguese for New State, which is often compared to Italian fascism. Portugal's right-wing dictatorship was one of the last Western European totalitarian regimes to fall, lasting until 1974, some years after Salazar's death. On 25th of April of the same year, the Carnation Revolution would take place. This was a pacific protest in which only one person lost their life. In fact, it was called the Carnation Revolution because the army would march with carnations inside their weapons barrels. Due to Salazar's isolationist policies, the Portuguese economy at that time had stagnated and was far behind other European countries. However, as time went by, it would get better and better. Finally, in 1986, Portugal entered the European Union, where it remains as a democratic nation until today.